good news for all. Key verse, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all Acts 10, 36. Bible text, Acts 10 colon 34 44. 34 Then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. 35 But accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. 36 You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. 37 You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached at 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. 39 We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. 40 But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. 41 He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. 42 He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. 43 All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. 44 While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. I am one. Who has God given the responsibility to teach and spread the good news? 2. Where do we preach the good news? 3. Why is it important to spread the good news? 4. How do we proclaim the good news? 5. The message we proclaim should point people to the person of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Good news for all good news of peace is meant to reconcile both of them to God through the cross thus. Jesus' work establishes peace between humans and God, and between one branch of humans and all others. As Paul explains it, Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away, Gentiles, and peace to those who were near, Jews. You will find peace and forgiveness when you turn to Christ alone by faith alone. This implies several things. Apart from Christ we are at war with God. Apart from Christ we are unforgiven. In Christianity, the good news is the message of Jesus, the Christ or Messiah a God's ruler promised by the scriptures. Specifically, the coming kingdom of God, his death on the cross and resurrection to restore people's relationship with God, the descent of the Holy Spirit on believers as the helper, the resulting promise and hope of being saved for any who believe and follow Jesus, and through this, a healing of the brokenness of the entire created universe. The Christian message of good news is described in the four Gospels. It relates to the saving acts of God due to the work of Jesus on the cross and resurrection from the dead which bring reconciliation between people and God. The Gospel is good news about Jesus' birth death and resurrection to restore people's relationship with God. Good news is the proclamation of the forgiveness of sins and sonship with God restored through Christ. Acts 10 colon 34 44 Peter preached the gospel with confidence. He introduced his message as good news of peace through Jesus Christ then he speaks of the life and ministry of Jesus from his baptism by John to his anointing with the Holy Spirit and power to perform miraculous healing of those oppressed then he transitions to Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. The apostles were witnesses of all that Christ had done, and it was their responsibility to proclaim the gospel or good news to all who would listen. The announcing of good news began with an angel heralding John the Baptist's birth to his father, Zechariah, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news, Luke 1 John the Baptist was the first to preach the gospel, 
Mark 1 colon 1 a 4, after John baptized Jesus, God's spirit and anointing rested on the Lord to bring good news to the poor. Dot. To proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, Luke 4:18, and to proclaim the good news of God, Mark 1:14. The good news about Jesus' birth brought hope to mankind who were living in fear, bondage, and hopelessness. Proverbs 15:30 says that good news gives health to the bones. Good news is like cold water that quenches your thirst and it makes one's bones to come alive. The good news that Joseph's brothers broke to their father revived him and brought health to his bones. Genesis 45:27. They told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them, and when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. In 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 8 to 16 if we are talking about somebody who is poor, we have a classical examples here. This is a widow who has only one meal left. She had good news that says to her a your poverty ends today. In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7. There was the case of another destitute. She was so poor that the creditors want to sell her sons. She also had a single divine encounter, and she got good news. The good news is, in less than 24 hours your debts are over, and number two, she will never borrow again. The gospel is good news because in it we find God's promise of forgiveness from sin. John testified that Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. John 1 29 Hebrews 9 28 Through the Gospel, we receive God's power to live a new life in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, for I'm not ashamed of the Gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. The Gospel is good news because to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, John 1 12 a 13. Everyone who believes in the gospel and submits to its demands receives new life in Jesus Christ. WHO has God given the responsibility to teach and spread the good news? Every Christian has been given the responsibility to teach and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. In fact, it is one of the reasons why Jesus has not returned to take us to heaven. The return of Jesus Christ is partly dependent on the gospel being preached and witnessed all over the earth and we have been sent to undertake the task, he told his disciples, you shall be my witnesses, Acts 1 to 8. We are to proclaim his kingdom in his power and authority. The gospel we proclaim is the greatest news in the world. If a sinner responds to it by trusting in Jesus as Savior and Lord, he is changed for time and eternity. The gospel was and still is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. You never know how far your witness for Christ will reach. None of the twelve spoke directly to Herod but their message still got to him. Where do we preach the good news? He instructed them to start from familiar territory and then progress into unfamiliar territory. Therefore, start from where you were and then move on to other places. Mark 16 15 20a And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons they will speak with new tongues they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. WHY is IT important to spread the good news? 1. Because God commands us to do it and the above scriptures in Mark, 
We note that Jesus commanded his disciples to go and preach the good news. It was neither a suggestion nor a negotiation. It was a command. This is why it is called the Great Commission and not the Great Suggestion. 2. Because it brings more joy in heaven A one of the ways to bring more joy into heaven is by bringing people to the knowledge and acceptance of the good news. The whole of heaven take a great deal of pleasure in seeing a sinner become a saint through the preaching of the good news. 3. Every time we share the gospel in word or deed, we further illuminate the world with a light of God. Bringing people out of darkness into the marvelous light of Christ results is a major boost to our eternal stand and relevance. 4. Because that is the way people will know the truth about the good news ignorance of God's love and provision is eradicated through the preaching of the gospel. Most people have a distorted image of God and it is our responsibility to present to them the right picture of who God is through the preaching of the gospel. People don't automatically know they are told and we are the tellers. How do we proclaim the good news? We proclaim the good news by deed and by word. Our lives must back up our message. The disciples were common men whose lives were different because of Jesus. When they went, they lived simply and stayed in homes. The people could see that their lives were in line with the message they proclaimed. If people see the reality of Christ in us, they will be more inclined to listen to our message. The disciples not only preached, but also healed in Jesus' name. This means also that we must perform deeds of mercy that minister to the whole person. Certainly we can and should pray that God would heal the illness of the one with whom we are sharing the gospel. If they need basic medical care, we should try to provide it. If they need food and shelter, we should help the person obtain these things. But every person's greatest need is not physical it is spiritual. If we provide for the person's physical needs but neglect the spiritual, they still will die and face God's judgment. Each person desperately needs to know Jesus Christ as Savior. The message we proclaim should point people to the person of the King the Lord Jesus Christ. Direct people to who Jesus is and to what he did on the cross. Encourage them to read the Gospel accounts. As John 20 31 explains, he wrote his Gospel that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. Thus, we proclaim to people the good news of God's kingdom rule in the person of Jesus the Messiah. Conclusion Think about proclaiming the good news. Proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed and every day in the temple and at home they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Acts 5:43. We are called to proclaim the good news day after day, never ceasing just as the disciples did in the passage above. Prayer I pray for you that the same people who carried bad news about you to run you out of town shall be the same people who shall break good news about what God has done in your life. Amen.